Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the convolution of two signals using the Z transforms. So in this, so in this example, we have a linear time invariant system that has an input X of n that goes through a system with unit sample response H of n and the corresponding output is Y of n. So we are given both X of n and H of n. And our goal is to find y of n. So given x of n as 3 power n u of minus n. So clearly that is not a causal signal. So x of n is 3 power n u of minus n. And h of n, h of n that is the system's sample response or the uh, unit sample response is given by 1 by 3 power n u of n minus 2. So now the goal is to find out y of n. So the first step is we have to convert both these x of n and h of n into z uh, domain that is we have to find their corresponding z transforms. So the first one will be z transform of x of n that is x of z is given by the z transform of x of n. So since x of n is 3 power n u of minus n we can define a new signal called x1 of n as 1 by 3 power n u of n which is basically a causal signal it is x1 of n is defined as 1 by 3 power n u of n which is a causal signal and now uh, x of n that is uh, 3 power n u of minus n can be easily related to this x1 of n as follows that is x of n is clearly equal to time reverse version of x1 of n that is x of n is x1 of minus n so it's a time reverse that is time reversal now we can easily find the z transform of x of n by using the time reversal property so for x1 of n, the corresponding z transform that is x1 of z, the z transform of x1 of n is given by 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse the ROC that is the corresponding ROC mod z greater than 1 by 3 that is it is the region on the z plane outside the circle of radius 1 by 3. So that is the z transform of x1 of n. And now since x of n is x1 of minus n, that is it is related by time reversal, we can find x of z by using the time reversal property of z transform, that is x of z will be x1 of z inverse. Therefore, x of z will be equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z. And the ROC becomes mod z less than 3, that is inverse of this value. That is mod z will be less than 3. That is the system is, uh, the system ROC is basically, or the signal's ROC is basically uh, inside a circle of radius 3. That is the Z transform of the signal or the input. Uh, now for the H of n, we have to find H of Z. So H of n can be written as 1 by 3 power, power 2 multiplied by 1 by 3 power n minus 2 into U of n minus. That is, since H of n is defined as 1 by 3 power n into u of n minus 2, uh, we just uh, subtract and add a 2 to the exponent, so of 1 by 3. So we, uh, we add and subtract a 2 to the exponent of 1 by 3, so we have 1 by 3 square multiplied by 1 by 3 power n minus 2 into u of n minus 2. Therefore, h of n can be related to x1 of n as follows, that is h of n will be equal to 1 by 3 square, that is 1 by 9, and then this is a delayed version of x1 of n. If you look at the definition of x1 of n, it is 1 by 3 power n u of n. So replace n by n, n with n minus 2, we get this component of h of n. So h of n is 1 by 9 and then delayed version of x1 of n. So h of n is indeed 1 by 9 h1 of n minus 2. So it is a delayed version of x1 of n. So by using the time delay property of the Z transform that is delay property or shifting property of the Z transform we have H of Z will be equal to 1 by 9 and then corresponding to, corresponding to this delay of value 2 we have Z power minus 2 and then Z transform of X1, uh, X1 of N which is 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 Z inverse. So the Z transform of H of N that is H of Z is given by 1 by 9 z power minus 2, 1 by 1 minus 3, 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse. And the ROC 
is again mod z less than is or ROC is mod z greater than 1 by 3. That is, it is the region outside a circle of radius 1 by 3. And this z power minus 2 doesn't really change the ROC. Now, the second step, that is, the second step is to find y of z. That is, we have to find the output z transform. That is, y of z. And based on the convolution property of the z transform, it is indeed equal to h of z multiplied by x of z based on the convolution property. So, that means uh, convolution in time domain is equivalent to multiplication in z domain. So, y of z is equal to h of z multiplied by x of z. So, therefore, y of z is indeed equal to h of z is 1 by 9 z power minus 2 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z power minus 1 and x of z x of z is given by 1 by 1 minus 3 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z so 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z and the roc will be the intersection of these two rocs so first one is uh, mod z less than 3 and second one is mod z greater than 1 by 3 so the roc will be the ring between these two circles that is it will be 1 by 3 less than mod z less than 3 so roc is the region between these two circles of radius 1 by 3 and 3 respectively. Now, the third step that is the final step in the uh, this problem is we have to find y of n as the z inverse that is inverse z transform of this inverse z transform of y of z. So, we have to find the inverse z transform of this y of z. So, we can rewrite this z transform y of z as purely a function of z inverse as follows that is it will be 1 by 9 z power minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 3 z power minus 1 that is for that is coming from h of z and then we can write x of z as follows that is minus 3 z inverse divided by 1 minus 3 z inverse. Now, this is purely in z inverses and then the ROC is again the same that is the ROC. Now, we can find the inverse z transform of this y of z by using partial fractions. So, by using partial fractions, we can rewrite y of z as follows that is minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 z power minus 3 upon 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse multiplied by 1 minus 3 z inverse will be equal to a times z power minus 2 upon 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse plus b times z power minus 2 upon 1 minus 3 z inverse. So, that is the partial fraction expansion of this z transform. Now, we can find the values of a and b as follows. So, by comparing the by comparing the coefficients of z power minus 2, we can say that a plus b will be equal to a plus b will be equal to 0 that is from z power minus 2 coefficients and from the coefficients of z power minus 3, we have minus 3 into a minus 1 by 3 into b will be equal to minus 1 by and since a plus b is equal to 0 uh, we can just solve these two equations uh, uh, and then we will find out that uh, we can easily find out that a is equal to 1 by 8 and b is equal to minus 1 by we can easily verify these results by substituting them back in the equation so a is 1 by 8 and b is minus 1 by 8 therefore the partial fraction expansion of the z transform y of z is equal to 1 by 8 multiplied by z power minus 2 upon 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse and for the second term we have in the second term we have z power minus 2 divided by 1 by 1 minus 3 z inverse so that is the expansion of the z transform now in order to find the inverse z transforms we have to think about their ROCs. So, uh, this can be rewritten as 1 by 8 z power minus 2 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse. So, this is a uh, this component has a causal inverse transform because the ROC is outside a circle of radius 1 by 3, but for this one it is a circle of uh, it is inside a circle of radius 3. So, this has to be rewritten as follows that is minus 1 by 3 z inverse 3 z inverse or divided by 1 minus 3 z inverse. Now, it is like a uh, z inverse multiplied by a z transform which is basically uh, the z transform of a 
anti causal signal therefore let us say y1 of z is equal to z power minus 2 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse then y1 of n will be simply a delayed version of the uh, z, uh, inverse z transform of this 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse so it will be equal to since the inverse z transform of 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse is 1 by 3 power n u of n so when we have this z power minus 2 there will be extra delay of two points that means it will be 1 by 3 and n is replaced by n minus 2 and then we have u of n minus 2 that is u of n is replaced by u of n minus 2 because of z power minus 2 that is there is an additional delay of two points and for y2 of z equal to z inverse multiply 1 by 3 z inverse and then minus 3 z inverse upon 1 minus 3 z inverse will be equal to and that means from this one implies y2 of n that is the inverse z transform of this thing or this y2 of z is a delayed version of the inverse z transform of this z transform that is this one is a z transform of an anti causal signal because because the roc is a region inside a circle of radius 3 so this is an anti causal signal so the corresponding inverse z transform should be 3 power n u of minus n that is because this minus 3 z inverse by 1 minus 3 z inverse in, is indeed equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z that means y2 of n is basically equal to 1 by 3 y2 of n is basically equal to 1 by 3 z inverse and then uh, basically multiplying this numerator with minus 1 by 3 z we get 1 by and then 1 minus 1 by 3 z so basically multiplying and uh, dividing this z transform with 1 by 3 z we get this expression so or minus 1 by 3 z we get this expression what this one this 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z is basically a z transform of 3 power n u of minus n so y2 of n will be equal to 1 by 3 so 3 power n and because of the delay we have minus n and u of minus n uh, and then we have a delay of 1 so it is u of minus of n minus 1 so it is 1 minus n so that is the z trans that is the inverse z transform of y2 of z so we have 1 by 3 3 power n minus 1 u of 1 minus n so to find y of n which is basically the combination of y1 of n and y2 of n using the linearity property that is y1 of n plus y2 of n and since y1 of n is 1 by 3 power n minus 2 into u of n minus 2 so we can write it down so we have 1 by 8 1 by 3 power n minus 2 u of n minus 2 that's a causal signal and then y2 of n is 1 uh, is 3 power n minus 2 that is 1 by 3 into 3 power n minus 1 can be written as 3 power n minus 2 u of 1 minus so that is the final y of n now let us verify this result by using simple matlab code now we can verify the uh, result by using this simple matlab code uh, so we just construct the signals x of n and h of n as the given signals that is x of n is basically 3 power n into u of n minus x of n is basically 3 power n into u of minus n that is we have 3 power n and we basically make uh, everything after 0 equal to 0 that is x of n n plus 1 to 2 n minus 1 now that means we put everything after n equal to 0 as 0 so we have 3 power n u of minus n and then we also have h of n as 1 by 3 power n and then we put everything before n equal to 2 as zeros so we have both the required signals and then to find the output y of n we can simply use the convolution function in matlab and then we up, uh, give these two as inputs that is h of n and x of n so we get y of n as the output and we can plot the uh, signal with respect to n uh, that is the time index and we can see the corresponding result so or it is uh, the first signal is, is not a causal signal so it has values only up to zero and the second signal h of n uh, is a causal uh, system so it has values from zero and then we have the convolution output which is basically having a peak value at n equal to 2 we can see that the value is uh, having a peak value that is the signal the output the output has a peak value at 2 and the value is given by 1 by 8 that is what we can verify in the theoretical result that is if we put n equal to 2 we can clearly see that uh, this value is clearly 0 
and but this one is uh, u of n minus 2 is then equal to 2 is 1 and this 1 by 3 power n minus 2 is also 1 so the value of y, uh, y of n at n equal to 2 is 1 by a and that should be the peak value and similarly the other values that is the value on both right side and left side of the peak are equal to 1 by 24 it is for both n equal to 3 and n equal to 1 will get 1 by 24 we can easily verify that by plugging, plugging value of n equal to 3 and also n equal to 1 in this expression and we can easily see that y of 1 and y of 3 are both 1 by 24 which we can also see in the result so to summarize we have basically utilized the conversion property of the z transforms to find out the output of a linear time invariant systems given the time sequence x of n and, and the uh, systems unit sample response h of n the first step is basically we have to find the z transforms of the both the input and the uh, unit sample response that is x of z is found to be 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z and with the roc uh, inside a circle of radius 3 and the z transform of h of n that is the unit sample response h of z is given by 1 by 9 z power minus 2 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 z power minus 1 so we use time reversal property and the time shifting property of the z transforms for this of our finding both x of z and h of z and in the second step we multiply h of z and x of z to find y of z and the corresponding roc is basically a ring like structure uh, between the circles of radius 1 by right eye 1 by 3 and 3 respectively and in the final step we found y of n by applying inverse z transform to y of z so to find the inverse z transform we use partial fractions so in this partial fractions uh, we found that the coefficients are the coefficients of the partial fractions as 1 by 8 and minus 1 by 8 so the y of z can be written as a linear combination of these two z transforms and now we can find the inverse z transforms of these two fractions uh, we found that y 1 of n is 1 by 3 n minus 2 u of n minus 2 and we also found y2 of n is 1 by 3 3 power n minus 1 and u of 1 minus n so it is not a causal signal so when we combine these two we get y of n as 1 by 8 y1 of n plus y2 of n so basically a linear combination and then y of n is, uh, is a combination of these two signals 1 by 8 1 by 3 power n minus 2 u of n minus 2 that is it starts at n, n equal to 2 and this component 3 power n minus 2 u of 1 minus n it starts at n equal to 1 and goes towards negative direction that is for n equal to 0 minus 1 and so on and we also verified the result by using a simple MATLAB code we construct the signals x of n and h of n and then we apply the convolution inbuilt function to find y of n and we found that the result exactly matches what we have in the theoretical analysis thanks for watching